Hello, darlings. Please do not adjust your sets. <laughs> I'm actually not in my bed. I'm out, on the la I'm out on the lounge day, so this is more like the lounge guru today. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, I had quite an emotional video last time, didn't I? I just felt so happy and so, I don't know, incredibly humbled that I could give my knowledge to people and people are actually listening and, and it's helping them. I just got a bit overwhelmed and I got so many beautiful emails from people afterwards. So I really do appreciate that. It was just so lovely. So thank you, girls. Um, for the videos that were, I'm sorry, for the emails that were sent to me, it's really cool. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, do you know what, it's been, I don't know why, I just keep feeling inspired to actually talk to you, so I've been doing them every couple of days, but I suppose that's not a problem. Today, I'm going to be talking about pets. Are they psychic, and what are they actually here for? Um, it's a really intriguing subject because some people think animals are animals and some people think they're like their children. It's a very mixed variety, but I'd like to go um, along with most people on the planet, especially UK. Absolutely adore our dogs and look at them as our fur babies. I certainly do. They're my life and they always have been. Um, so I, I was just sitting here for about 10 minutes, quite intrigued as to, you know, why they were here. <clears throat> and what they're up to. The reason being is because, and it's in my book as well actually, I keep giving these spoilers, it's not worth bleeding getting it printed soon is it? <laughs> but basically I was um, looking over a, a couple of chapters where Teddy, my little um, dog, look, look at him now, he's washing Mia. He does that every single morning and every night. He washes her ears, he washes her face and she just lets him. How adorable is that? And then I've got my little cast there, which is my boyfriend's dog. And she's staying here for a little while because she's got a sore soldier. I was going to say soldier, but she's a soldier, shoulder. She is a soldier, actually, because she actually was an explosives dog and done tours in Afghanistan. So she's a total hero, bless her heart. I just thought I'd show you my little doggies, little love that's surrounded by me. Anyway, as usual, I digress. I think that's a bit tipsy turvy, but then that pretty much represents me anyway. So basically, um, I realised during my time when I was bedbound during those years that Teddy had adopted um, a kind of like routine for me. Now I rescued him, he was left starved in a garden and he was rescued and I had him, same as Mia, she was rescued from a puppy farm. So I kind of felt like we rescued each other because what started to happen is that um, obviously I was in bed full time for, for a couple of years and um, with Emmy and the CFS it was, um, and fibromyalgia it was really bad. And basically I found that he started to adopt this routine, 11 o'clock in the morning he'd wake me up to ensure that I got up and actually, most probably to feed him and, and Mia. So I thought, no, discount that. And then at two o'clock, around two o'clock, he'd wake me up. And then around six o'clock, he'd wake me up. Then around, most probably about 11 o'clock at night, he'd wake me up. And it seemed to be within 10 minutes of that time scale that he used to wake me up. And I started to learn that he was actually getting me up to move around and to make sure I was okay, because I literally was permanently sleeping. And so he was waking me up at like, more or less four three hour intervals to get me up and awake and just to do something even if it was just to go to the loo and make a cup of tea and I thought wow that's really incredible and what I've noticed is when I'm on a good day and I'm up and about you know he doesn't do it but if I've got a day where I think I've got to stay in bed he adopts back into these like every few hours waking me up and what he does he either gets on my chest and paws at me or he does this really annoying snorting sniffing sound to get me awake and then once he knows I'm awake and I'm perhaps gone to the, you know, gone to make a cup of tea, he'll then go and sit on the bed and then he'll go back to sleep or do whatever he's doing. It's really incredible. And I started thinking about this and I remember actually um, asking about pets when I went up um, to the reality layer, which is like the, the layer of heaven where we all like hang out after we've passed over from our life experience. And I remember sitting in my nan's lounge having a cup of tea and my dad was there, my granddad was there, and um, Mia come run Mina come running in, and Mina was my dog before um, my two little ones, completely opposite to them, huge big bull mastiff, and um, I said, oh my God, you know, she's so happy, she's so brilliant, 
And I said, I'm just so pleased because, you know, she had this awful tumour and she was dying and everything. And she looked like she was like a year old. She was just running around like a nutter. And then my dad whistled and she come and sat next to his feet. And I said, like, oh, don't come and see me then. And she was just so happy, bless her heart. She did come and see me, obviously. And so um, I know that obviously they survive afterwards. I've done a video about that already, about pets in heaven. And um, also my other book that I've, that's in the pipeline. And there's a wonderful story about how a dog shows its survival after um, it, it's basically gone to heaven. Lots of you have also emailed me and I've heard of it loads of times, hundreds of times. And I've seen it myself where you might see like a little shadow walk past the hall or you'll feel, you know, um, a dog jump on your bed or go past your legs. And then normally your dog's just popping down to come and say hello. So with all this in mind, I decided um, to ask about, you know, why they're here and why they have such a short life. Because the other thing with Mina that I found as well was, was that um, I, f I honestly had this sense, and I don't know if it's because it was just me feeling it because I was her mummy, or because it was a psychic instinct, but she was getting really poorly, and my birthday, which was the 17th of September, it's like she was on, she was basically on her way out, so I was sleeping with her all the time, like, you know, literally night and day, I was I was downstairs on the city bed with her, and um I knew she'd hung on for my birthday, I just knew it. And then her next appointment to go and see the oncologist was on the 20th. And that night, the 19th, I said, I know you hung on in there for my birthday and I really appreciate it. I was cuddling her at the time, obviously crying my eyes out. And I said, listen, darling, I said, go home. I said, I swear I'm gonna be all right. Because I know as well, and to talk about this later, that she came into my life at the right time. And so I said, you can go home, I'm gonna be fine. Please, don't worry, I'm gonna be fine you can go home. It's almost like I gave her a blessing, like a lot of us do with our loved ones, you know, when they're in hospital and they're passing, you just give them a blessing, it's okay, let go. And then the following day she passed. Um, and I also did it with one of my friend's dogs, who was really poorly, and um, I'd had a, sw I had a swollen gland, and I just thought, I just feel like he wanted to go home. And that night, I didn't tell any of them, but I sat on the landing with him and said, darling, it's okay, you can let go now. They're all happy, they're all fine, go home. And my God, the dog was dead in the morning. And I felt so guilty, I thought I bloody killed it myself. I was like, oh my God, but I just spoke to it. So one of the things I need to say to you is, is that the soul of the dog understands everything you say. Now, if you obviously, you know, humans and scientists and the rest of it say they understand voice vibration and, you know, the rays and, dip of our, the volume of our voice and the tone of it but the thing is is that when I've gone and I know it's going to sound really weird to skeptics right but when I've brought messages to people like working as a medium and their dogs come through the dogs will talk about not obviously chat there with their mouth open but they'll, they'll they'll bring up memories of what happened when they were on the earth plane memories of what they shared with their humans you know they actually communicate their soul communicates that so I, I do believe that Perhaps we can, um, you know, incarnate, incarnate into a, a, an animal just for the experience and perhaps then we can incarnate into a human. Who knows? You know, you can't limit the expectations of what um, we do with our lives when we obviously come down to the earth plane. So they're, they're very intelligent. They do hear you. They know exactly what you're saying, even if they can't physically reply back. From what I know, from all like 20 odd years, 27 years I've been doing readings and connecting with animals for, they know everything. It's like I remember doing a reading for a guy once whose mum come through and he was really cool and his best friend come through and blah, blah, blah. And then his horse came through. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of this horse talking. I'm just... But he did. And this horse just stood there. And I said, oh, I've got this horse standing here. And, he, and like I got his name and I said what he passed with. And... You know, the adventures I used to get up to and where he used to stay and the address of the stables and weird things like that. He was on the floor, this bloke, because that horse meant more than more to him than anything. And at the end of the day, they do, don't they? If you think about it, you know, I, I, I defy anybody that says they don't talk to their animals. And I, I do. I talk to them about everything. They're the most brilliant counsellors ever because they don't say anything back. They just look at you with an understanding, uncompromising love. And just absorb everything you've got to say to them. Stroking them, obviously, is already scientifically proven that it reduces stress. Um, they're here to look out for us, to keep us company. They have a, a, a most magical bond with us that's just unbreakable. Totally unbreakable. And for spiritual people as well, the more older souls, our bond with our animals is just unbelievable. So when we lose them, it's absolutely soul-destroying. 
Um, and I so I basically went up and said, look, what's the deal with animals? What happens with it all? You know, what what are they psychic? Can they do they connect with us? Well, and Juliana said to me, well, of course, they've got a soul. They can connect with us as much as we can connect with them. We can obviously tell them or inspire them on what behaviour to take place to assist you. And, they, and also they will sense and see um, spirits. So basically they're a bit like a baby or a young child. They're totally open without any social inhibitions or any um, behavioural inhibitions that if they see a spirit people, they will look, right? Funnily enough, she's just looking in the middle of the hall now. There's someone that keeps walking past my hall and I'm starting to know what times they go in case it's like a res residual energy, like, you know, locking up the door at, locking up the door at whatever time I'm on in. It's really weird, it's starting to grab. So, um, and now she sees it and she just goes and sits in the hallway and just watches and then I can see the shadow going past, but I don't know who it is and I don't want to talk. So, I don't know, perhaps it's just, perhaps it is just residual energy of someone locking up and going to bed because it's always in the evening, but anyway. I'm digressing as usual. So basically, they can see um, spirit people. So do you know what I also did once was, is I knew that someone was in the room, I think it was my dad, and I said, I just, you know, we obviously doubt it, don't we? And I said, Dad, if that's you, walk across to the other side of the room. And then I watched my dog, and he just watched and followed, and I was like, yes, because he was actually watching the spirit person, my dad, as I, whereas I told him to walk. It was so cool, so it was a good experiment. Anyway, so when I spoke to Julianus about animals and pets, he basically said, it's a bit like, do you know like the Celestine Prophecies, if you read that? Certain people, I've done this before on one of my videos. There she goes. It's okay, that's enough. Good girl. So on, on one of my videos, I've done about soul clusters and about how we all connect and that we plan our life down here. We plan our experiences and when like you know the crap's hitting the fan we then say well you better come in and support me during that time it's very much like that we also implement um animals into our lives i'm going to use dogs as for instance rather than keep talking about all different types of animals right so basically we um put in our blueprint before we come down that we would like assistance during this time or we'd like to experience the love and support of a dog during that time now the reason why they only have short lives is because basically they deserve to go back home because who wants to stay down here? <laughs> Don't think that in an horrible, oh my God, why? But that's why they've got short lives because they come in, do what they need to do and then they go back home. It's as simple as that. Um, perhaps they are enlightened souls that have done everything and thought, you know what, I'm going to do my one last incarnation as animal and then I'm going to pop off to some other different layer of energy in the universe. So they come down to be with us for certain times and reasons. So for instance, when I got retired from the police service, I pretty much lost the plot. Um, I got medically retired and I wasn't happy about it. And um, I ended up just thinking, I've got to get a dog, I've got to get a dog. And I found Mina and this big, huge bull mastiff that thought she was poodle, which was hilarious. And everybody used to say, and they all say this to me with my animals, they always say, they're like humans. They're like humans in a in a fur coat, and they've all you know every single dog I've ever had. People have said that, so I don't know if I've got like these enlightened beings chucked in a dog suit. Or not. <laughs> no, that's enough. <laughs> wait, 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 that's enough. Excuse me, talking, talking. Um, so basically, they incarnate down, and as I say, Mina was there for me during my. I pretty much had a breakdown, I suppose, because it was the only anchor I ever had. The police service. Um, and when I lost that, I have pretty much lost the plot. So she kind of took me through that. I also had a breakup as well, so she, she was with me for that. And it was almost like she was my solace. She was my person that held my hand through all of it, you know, and that you could talk and cry over with her and all sorts of things, and she was there for that. And weirdly enough, I've looked into this because she passed in September 2011, three months before my road accident, and I know that when I had that road accident, oh, there was no way I could look after this like, like 10 stone dog. There was no way I could do it. You know, it just would have been a complete nightmare. I couldn't have lifted her, I couldn't walk her um, and give the exercise she needed. It would have been a total nightmare. Um, and so I wonder if she said, right, well, I'll be there for that and I'll be there for that. And then I'm gonna go up because you're not gonna be able to manage me. And then I'll go back up and watch over you and pop in and see you now and then. And then the little dogs can take over. Because I wasn't going to have dogs. I was just so absolutely beside myself that I'd lost her. I needed bloody medication, I tell you. It was awful. 
It was just like losing a family member, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm like that of all my dogs. People say, why do you do it then? Because they get, the, more, the joy they give you every single day is way worth you grieving, you know, for a few months. So um, I didn't want any dogs at all. And what happened was, was that this email came up and I was laying in bed after the accident. This email came up showing this poor little dog. And I thought, my God, I've got to go and get him. Well, I didn't go and get him. Someone went and got him for me. So I said, just get him. He's not going to need a lot of excitement at the moment. He just needs love and shelter and food. And so that's how little Teddy come along. Now, the weird thing is, is I felt guilt because this is obviously part of your grieving process, isn't it? Guilt. And I thought, my God, you know, this was uh, March 20, 2012 when I was in, down here in Devon. And I thought, oh my God, Mina is just, 31st of March it was, and I thought, Mina is just going to go, oh really, you got over me quick. And I know it's ridiculous because they're not going to think that. They're up there in the spirit world and they're like, yeah, go on, do something that makes you happy, like our spirit loved ones do. You know, if you get remarried and your husband's passed from before, perhaps there is a bit of guilt there. But they're like, thank God, she's like moving on and she's happy. But I know I'll be back with her when she comes up. You know, so it's a very similar kind of ethos. So um, I had Teddy and I did feel guilty because I wasn't ready for a dog. I was still grieving me now. I was obviously grieving the fact that I was laying in bed and totally polaxed by this road accident. <coughs> Oi! <coughs> See, I talk about how lovely they are. They're pain in the bum, aren't they? Come here. Come here, Tits. So basically, um, I got Teddy on the 31st of March. Here's my little Teddy. He even got in on my Candice magazine interview. Did you see that? Cheeky little bugger. It's like, I want to get in photographs as well. So basically, um, on the 31st of March, he came along and he was absolutely rubbish. And so all he needed was a cuddle and shelter and love. And that's what we did. Um, and then weirdly enough, about a week later, <laughs> someone, Mia... Come here, darling. She thinks she's a Rottweiler. I love it. I know. So I basically, um, a week later, had an arrival <coughs> come. Stay there, Cass. Somebody there. So I had an arrival come. I always say don't work with animals and dog and children. <laughs> she's like, you're right. So basically. I'm going to get there in the end, aren't I? You're like, for God's sake, come on. I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. So, a week later, a package arrived for me, and it was a really huge package, and I thought, that's weird, because I didn't order anything. I certainly haven't been out and about to go and buy or order anything, and I was quite surprised. And I, it was brought to me in bed, and I opened it, and incredibly, it was a beautiful portrait drawn by someone of Mina. And... The weird thing is, is that when Mina passed, I went, when I went to pick up her ashes, a sycamore leaf dropped onto um, her box. I sat under a tree and I was just, it wasn't a sycamore tree, funny enough, which is a bit weird. And the sycamore seed, you know those helicopter things, landed on the, um, her ashes. And then I basically um, had a big rainbow come up right in front of me. I then got a text message from one of my friends who's psychic saying, your dad's just been here, he knows how upset you are about me now, but look for the rainbows because that's going to be a sign that she's okay and she's with you. And I kid you not, and I've got loads of witnesses to this, um, I saw a rainbow every single day for about a month and, and I, can, I can totally verify this because when it was a nightmare because three days after Mina died I had to go and do a, a residential spiritual retreat in Scotland which was amazing. And everybody was amazing because I was pretty upset. I was really finding it tough to get through it. But everybody was so supportive. Um, and every day we saw a rainbow. Every single day. I just couldn't believe it. And if it wasn't a rainbow, it would be like, you know, I picked up a, a packet of, I think I've said this in another video, I picked up a packet of tissues and there was a rainbow on it. I then went and had my nails done and the woman said, oh, I've just had a tattoo. And she picked, and she picked up her top and it said somewhere over the rainbow and it was a rainbow on there. It was literally rainbows right in front of my face every day. It was ridiculous. So now going back, now whizzing forward to, um, to March 31st, when I got Teddy and felt guilty, and this woman, just completely of her own volition, Right, it sent me this pitch, sent, uh, drawn me this beautiful art of Mina with a rainbow behind it, right? And on the bottom, she's put 31st of March. And I'm like, what the hell? So I actually got in touch with her, obviously. I was so grateful and so thankful. People send me presents and I just, I don't know why, but I just am so, so grateful and so over the moon when people do it. 
And I said to her, what possessed you to do a picture of Mina? Can you believe this? Hang on a minute. It's like bloody Piccadilly Circus here. I'm going to have to come and stop this and do it again in a minute because there's bloody someone at the door. So I'll speak to you in a bit. <laughs>